Welcome to the fifth module of the MOOC Algorithmic Information Dynamic. As probably you know by now, my name is Narciss, and today I will talk to you about dynamical systems. At the end of 17th century, Leibniz and Newton, independently one from the other, invented a brilliant mathematical tool, differential and integral calculus. This is an incredibly efficient crystal ball to predict the future provided the system in question is governed by differential equation. Using it, Poincaré worked on celestial mechanics and specifically in a 270-page prize-winning and initially flawed paper, start the qualitative theory of dynamical systems. The methods developed therein laid the basis for the local and global analysis of nonlinear differential equations including the use of first return Poincaré maps, a stability theory for fixed point and periodic orbits, a stable and unstable manifolds, and the Poincaré reoccurrence theorem. In this module, the idea is to make you a very generic introduction to dynamical systems. We talk about how systems typically only occupy a small subset of the overall space as they cycle through some set of states. We will be talking about attractors and the fundamental role they play within dynamics of a system. We will discuss chaotic and complex regimes consisting of multiple attractors and equilibria very briefly. The concepts of Boolean network as a discrete dynamical system will be introduced and we will learn how we can analyze them. Okay, let's see what we mean with dynamical system. Within science and mathematics, dynamic is the study of how things change with respect to time, as opposed to describing things simply in terms of their static properties as we've done in previous majors. The pattern we observe all around us in how the state of things change over the time is an alternative way through which we can describe the phenomena we see in our world. A dynamical system is a set of possible states together with a rule that determines the present state in terms of past states. As example for dynamical system, you can think of any system that is evolving in a time. For example, the pendulum, or whether evolution, or the evolution of population of bacteria, or any kind of season that evolves through time. The dynamical system has two parts, a state space and function, and we describe such a system by them. So let's see what they are. As we said, dynamical system is the study of the things which are changing over time. Those things are states. And a state space is a model used within dynamical system to capture this change in a system state over time. Or, or we can say a state space is the set of all possible states of a dynamical system, and each state of the system corresponds to a unique point in the state space. For example, um, let's think about a, an idealized pendulum. The state of an idealized pendulum is uniquely defined by its angle and angular velocity. So the state space is the set of all possible pairs of angle and velocity which form the cylinder. Uh, in general, any abstract set could be a state space of some dynamical system. It could be finite consisting of just a few points or consisting of an infinite number of points forming a smooth manifold, as usually is the case in ordinary differential equation and mappings. Such a state space is often called a phase space. A state space could be infinite dimensional as in partial differential equations and delay differential equations. Even in symbolic dynamic, it is a contour set, which is a zero dimensional. Um, and let's not forget about the second part of dynamical system, which we needed to describe the system, function. Function tell us, given the current state, what the state of the system will be in the next instant of the time. For investigating dynamical systems, it's necessary to specify some characteristics that provides a subdivision into special classes of dynamical systems. 
specific methods are available for some of these classes. Thus, such a classification can help to simplify the analysis. The first class we will talk about is deterministic dynamical system. As you can probably guess by name, a dynamical system is deterministic if the present state can be determined uniquely from the past states, which means no randomness is allowed. Stochastic models possess some inherent randomness, and chaotic model is a deterministic model with a behavior that cannot be entirely predicted. They are predictable in a very short term, but appears random for longer periods. An important characteristic of a dynamical system is whether it is continuous or discrete. In a discrete system, the state variables change only at countable number of the points in time. These points in times are the ones at which the event occurs that may change in the state, while in continuous dynamical system, the state variables change in a continuous manner and not abruptly from one state to another, which give us infinite number of states. Uh, so in other words, we can say when the reals are acting, the system is called a continuous dynamical system. And when the integer are acting, the system is called a discrete dynamical system. Continuous system normally described by a set of differential equations, whereas discrete dynamical system, we often refer them as a maps, or are specified by difference equations. Uh, let's start by an uh, example of a difference equations or a discrete dynamical system. In this system, normally we denote time by k or n, and then the system can be solved by iterative calculations called iterative maps. Iterative maps give us less information, but are much simpler and better suited to dealing with very many entities, especially where feedback is important. A very typical example of a discrete dynamical system is annual progress of a bank account. If the initial deposit is 100,000 euros and the annual interest is 3%, then we can use a difference equation to describe the whole system where the amount of money in the account at the next year will be 1.03 times the amount of money at the current year in the account. In a continuous system, the time interval between our measurement is negligibly small, making it appear as one long continuum. And this is done through the language of calculus and using differential equation or set of them. For example, you can think of vertical throw of a ball or any other object which can be described by initial conditions and the height and the velocity of the ball or the objects of interest. You can see the equation here, the differential equations which can describe this system. Calculus and differential equation have formed a key part of a language of modern science since the days of Newton and Leibniz. Even though an analytical treatment of dynamical system is usually very complicated, obtaining a numerical solution is often straightforward. Solving differential equations numerically can be done by a number of schemes, and very interestingly, these techniques for solving a differential equation based on numerical approximation were developed before programmable computer even exists. During World War II, for example, it was common to find rooms of a people, usually women, working on mechanical calculators to numerically solve system of differential equation for military calculations. 
The easiest way to solve a system of differential equations numerically is by using the first order Euler method, which uses the idea of local linearity or linear approximation where we use small tangent lines over short distance to approximate the solution to an initial value problem. If we zoom in small enough, every curve looks like a straight line and therefore the tangent line is a great way for us to calculate what is happening over a period. Today we have many numerical methods to solve differential equations and there is no best way or best methods since the methods to be chosen heavily depends on the problem, for example if it is stiff or non-stiff, uh, if it is smooth or non-smooth, um, so there is, it more depends on the problem. Uh, and for a general or a standard um, equation, a fourth order Ron Cota is a good one and it's very easy to add an error estimator to it with no or little additional cost. A predictor, corrector, Adams methods also does the jobs and they are also quite popular. Differential equations are great for few elements. They give us lots of information but uh, they also become very complicated very quickly. Whereas differential equations are central to modern science, iterative math are central to study of nonlinear system and their dynamic because they allow us to take the output to the previous state of the system and feed it back into the next iterations and thus making them well designed to capture the feedback characteristic of nonlinear systems. Another important classification of dynamical system is based on linearity. Let us start by defining a nonlinear system. Nonlinear system is a set of nonlinear equations, and an equation is nonlinear where unknown quantity that we want to solve for appears in a nonlinear fashion. For example, if the quantity in question is a function of yt, then the terms such as y power 2 or sine y would be nonlinear. More precisely, a nonlinear equation is a one where a linear combination of solutions is not a new solution. So now if, if we go back to what is a linear system, we can say that in a linear system, function that is describing the system behavior must satisfy two basic properties additivity and homogeneity. So let's look at two systems and decide that if they are linear or not, system A and system B. Uh, we start with system A. To see that if system A is linear or not, we can use the two properties which we talked about them, additivity and homogeneity. And we need to test it for all equations in the system but we have shown it only for, um, it has been shown only for x here. So if we test those properties, we see that the A system A satisfy and so it's linear while system B does not satisfy them and so it's not linear. When it comes to the differential equation, a differential equation we say that it's linear if the coefficients are constants or function only of the independent variable normally time. The last uh, classification of dynamical system, which we'll talk about it in um, this module, is if a system of ordinary differential equation is autonomous or not. If we have a system of ordinary differential equation which do not depend on independent variable, we call it an autonomous system. And if uh, this independent variable is time, we call it time invariant system. Uh, in an autonomous system, if the input signal xt produces an output yt, then any time shifted input xt plus delta result in a time-shifted output y t plus delta. So let's look at these two systems, A and B, and decide if they are autonomous or not. 
So let's uh, examine system A, and you can do the same for system B. If we start with delaying of the input with delta, and calculate what will be the output of the system, uh, then we delay the output and check that if these two are equal or not, then we can decide that the system is autonomous or not. In our case, for system A, y1t is not equal to y2t, and therefore the system A is not time invariant or is non-autonomous.